this weather is why you get the cabin. You know, nowadays there are so many different boat manufacturers out there that it is almost impossible to say that there is a perfect boat for everybody. And I kind of agree with that. Today we are on the Axopar 28 cabin. Now this boat is definitely not for everybody, primarily because of its size and obviously the cabin that it has. But for some, it is probably the ideal boat. This one in particular will be operating as a water taxi down in Miami Bay and it's probably the perfect boat for that. You have comfortable seating for up to six people inside the cabin. We have the two main seats over here and then we have a back bench where yes you can fit probably four people depending on their size but for the most part you can. Then over at the bow we have kind of like an L-shaped seating. It's not really L-shaped but kind of is in some way. And then you have the ability to convert that into a full sun pad. So if you want to lay down, you can. Or if you want to have the table mounted, you can have the table. Now this boat is not fully completed as we are getting it ready for delivery. So we are going to be using some footage from uh, boats that we've had in previous boat shows so that you can see what the actual layout is like. This boat in particular offers the bench seating in the back. So one thing that I really like about Axapart is the versatility and the amount of options that you have for their decks. You can either have a nav cabin in the back, you have the wet bar, which is probably the most popular configuration. You have an open deck, meaning you don't really have anything, you just have extra space. And then this one in particular has the bench seating. Now underneath that bench seating, you have sufficient storage. If you wanted to fit, for instance, an extra fuel tank, you can, if you wanted to fit uh, custom cooler you can so it offers a little bit of a different uh, feature as the other layouts work so I really like that about Axopark this particular boat is powered by the twin Mercury 200s now the Axopark 28 handles and performs just like the Axopark 37 it's kind of like a mini rocket and the reason of, for that being is you have the same speed as the 37 you have the same hull design so you do have that twin step and you'd be surprised as to how well of a performer it is in rough weather conditions today we're expecting around three to four footers so we're going to be able to show you a little bit of what the boat is capable of in rough weather and also try to pin it down and see what we can get in terms of high-end numbers Now I know a lot of you might be saying, why do you have a cabin boat in Florida? You have the sun, it's not really cold. Well, the main reason is a lot of people like having that full element protection. It rains a lot in Florida. If you wanna go on a trip down to the Bahamas, you have the ability to do it nice and lean and enclosed. You can add an air conditioning to this cabin. You can overnight in this by simply twisting these seats around and then you have a filler cushion right here and you can make this an, ex an entire bed area. Not to mention if you get actually the uh, cabin as well. So the boat is pretty versatile and you can use it to any particular need that you may need. So the Axopar 28 cabin is gonna run you around 190 all the way up to 200, maybe 210, depending on which configuration you choose. Obviously, if you get the AC, that's gonna add it up to the 220s but that's pretty much how high you can go. You also have, if you wanna go the extra mile, the Brava Shadow 500. So it's the same hull, but you get the twin Mercury 250s in the back and then everything else done by Bravest Marine directly. Stay tuned within the next few weeks as we will be shooting a Bravest Marine Shadow 900 cross cabin in a beautiful brand new color from Bravest Marine that we are very excited to showcase here in Florida. I'm really excited about that boat, man. It's got the twin Mercury 450s. That's a boat that does roughly 65 miles an hour. Plus, it's the first one in that color scheme down in Florida, so it's gonna be an eye popper for sure. 
So be sure to check that video out once we drop it and we'll leave a link in the description below. Now let's talk a little bit about the quality of this Axopar 28 cabin. We have, like most other Axopars, we have our two SIMRAT screens. This one has the information display, which I absolutely love. You get the two screens dialed behind the glass, makes it look nice, sporty, minimalistic, and it's all digital, it's all touchscreen. They also have their nice rubberized material that covers the entire helm area. Gives it a nice look. It separates it from the traditional white that we see on most other boats. So I kind of like that. Over here, we have a nice Axopar handle, nice grabbing support for the person sitting on your port side. And then over here, we have our traditional uh, electronics. We have our Fusion stereo controllers. We have our Simrad VHF. We have our Mercury vessel view. We have our manual trim tabs over here. And then your bow thruster. Now, do you really need a bow thruster on this boat? The straight answer is gonna be no. It's a really easy boat to maneuver, especially if you're a single person or even a novice uh, in the boating world. But it gives you extra ease if you really needed it. Now, when we look at the Axopar 28s, I kind of like the 28 cabin over the 28 T-top for one particular reason. Yes, the T-top is the open version, so for some, it is gonna be most attractive, especially here in Florida. But one thing that I really like on the cabin, aside from the 28 TT, is the actual fact that I can walk from either end from port to starboard without having to actually crawl through the port side like I have to do on the 28 TT. That's something that I don't really like about the T-top and I would prefer going with the cabin for that reason, but that's just me. I forgot to mention that we also have the sunroof on the 28 cabin. You don't have that on the 28 TT. You get the same top that you would get on a 37. I guess the only thing that I really don't like about the 28 cabin is the amount of space that I have between the pilot house and the rest of the boat. So it can feel a little bit small, especially if you're a big guy. So if the space is really an issue for you, well, I guess you can up, always upgrade to the 37, which I'm not gonna lie. Most people that start off with the 28, they end up upgrading to the 37 just because they really like the quality of the boat. They like the handling, they like the performance, and they like what Axopar stands for, which is adventure. This boat, I love how we have the roof racks up top. We can easily put a paddle board, a kayak, a flight board, pretty much any toy that we want and just go out there. And if we want to do some fishing, we can do some fishing. If we want to lounge, we can lounge. If we want to go cruising, we can go cruising. So it's a pretty much all around boat and it works how you make it work. Raving so much on the 37, I do have to say that one thing that I really like about the 28 is the fact that it has a separate bathroom. So on the 37, it's got two different layouts. You can get a full toilet compartment or you can get the open uh, cabin space with the toilet basically underneath one of the cushions. I know, ladies, you're not gonna like that. So I know that you guys are probably gonna prefer the bathroom that this boat offers. You have a nice full toilet in front of the helm. You got nice headroom and to enter there comfortably. Yes, you don't have a shower, but again, it's a 28. Usually you don't find a shower on a 28 center console like this. There you have my opinions on the 28 cabin. I'm, I try to be as honest as I can about the boat. I do like it. Yes, I do think that there are some things that I would prefer being a little bit different, but I mean, all around, Axopar makes a great 28 footer. If you're looking for something with a cabin, you wanna be enclosed, not, the fact that you have the two rows covered underneath a hardtop, I mean, that's pretty sweet. Now guys, I'm really curious as to what your opinions are on this particular boat. If you have likes or dislikes, please let us know in the comments below. If you have anything that you would like to see in future Axopar videos, please let us know. I really do appreciate it if you take a minute to like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I hope you enjoy the ride that we're about to go on. I hope you're able to see a little bit of what the boat is capable of. Hey guys so we are outside of port everglades we headed a little bit east 
as if we were headed towards the Bahamas, just to get a little bit of the waters that we're seeing now. We have roughly three to four footers, big waves for a small 28 footer like the axle car. And I'm just impressed at how amazingly it, it handles. I mean, the boat's not slamming at all. It's, it's an easy, like smooth landing into the next wave. Right now I'm cruising at 22 miles an hour. It's amazing we're in the cabin. So obviously any spray that I may get, I'm not getting wet. Now we're gonna go with the wave and see how she handles. We're gonna avoid the dives. This weather is why you get the cabin. It just feels different. I mean, you feel protected. Obviously you're, you're gonna stay dry. You don't have to worry about getting wet or getting your passengers wet. It's just really smooth. See how she handles, boom, easy, nice. Just turn the wipers on, you're good. All right guys, so that concludes our sea trial portion of the Axopar 28. The boat is capable of rough weather conditions. A lot of people never think that because of the height of the boat. I was doubtful myself at the beginning as well, but I mean, it performs. We were out in three to four footers and the boat cruising comfortably between 27 and 30 miles an hour. No slamming, smooth landings. It's all thanks to the hull design that Axopar has on this. You have the twin step, you have that sharp bow entry point, and obviously the weight plays a, a, a big role. It's a light boat, so obviously with the twin engines, the boat is pretty much gliding on top of the waves and it's not really dragging and pushing all that weight down. So now we're headed back to the marina. We're gonna leave the boat over in the slip. It's gonna be hauled out tomorrow. This boat is getting an AC system done. So that's the next on the list before it goes out for delivery. All right, so we were finally able to get the boat ready. We went ahead and installed the Maybrew AC system, 12,000 BTU unit for the main pilot house. And then we were also able to install the flooring. So we have nice light tech flooring, synthetic teak foam inside. And now what we're gonna do is take the boat over to 15th Street boat ramp and deliver this boat to its new owners. So we're gonna hop up in the F-250 and take you guys along for the delivery process. Let's go.